righteousness and humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so I am seeking, searching for the things this world has rejected, the things that are broken, that are flawed, thrown away and discarded. I seek the lost, the damaged, the forgotten things, the overlooked and the neglected things that have been pushed aside and left behind. Why? Why do I do this? Why chase after that which is despised by so many? It is because I have chosen the rejected. I bring restoration to the broken. 
I see beyond the flaws and the imperfections, and I bring new life to the lost. This world has called them useless and garbage, hopeless and unwanted. They have been scarred, abused, ignored, and unloved. But I, I have reclaimed them. And they belong to me now. They are my masterpiece. And I have a plan and a future for every single one. For I am crafting these dissonant and discarded pieces into something beautiful. God, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, and this morning we are a new creation. I hope that you are blessed wherever you are this morning, whatever you're doing today. Give me about another, about the next hour of your day, and, and let me speak blessings into your life. We're going to uh, have a couple songs here in just a moment. We'll pray in just another, after, after our first song this morning, kind of like we try to do in-house, but I hope that you're blessed today. Today is BGMC Day. And uh, save that BGMC, I am planning on, hoping for, and believing God that we're going to be able to, to be in service next week. It will, it will likely require masks uh, of everybody that comes, but we will still be live here online and uh, share with you this way as we have become accustomed to doing. And we'll continue to do so uh, for as long as we're able. And uh, thank God that we have this technology, have this ability, otherwise uh, we wouldn't have anything. And we certainly, that's, that's not an option. We've got to do something to... Spend time together in worship, spend time together in the Word each and every week, and, and a time together just with one another as best we can under these circumstances. And uh, we're believing God's going to bless us and, and get us back to normal, and back, back into our, 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 our being together. And uh, that's, that's our hope and that's our prayer and our desire. So looking forward to that. Hopefully by Wednesday, uh, if things go well, Wednesday night we will be back in person. Uh, we'll let you know that probably Wednesday morning, now, maybe short notice, but uh, Wednesday morning, we're back in person, or Wednesday night, excuse me, for our Wednesday night Bible study, back in person together. Those that come, those that watch online will be able to, of course, see it there. And then next Sunday, uh, back to business, back in, back in house. And that's, that's our desire, that's our hope. So if you want to send tithes offerings or uh, your, any other offering that you have, BGMC, missions, what have you, uh, you can send that. There's an address there on the page. Or if you want to send me a message, let me know that you need that address. We'll get that for you. And to give that opportunity to continue to be faithful in your finances to the Lord. So uh, beyond that, let's worship God together this morning and uh, enjoy our time together. And uh, what a beautiful name it is. And let's honor that name this morning. Uh, sing this wherever you are, whatever you're doing. I'm doing it here. I'm going to worship God here just like I would if, I, if we were together.
Thank God. This morning, church, as we pray, we're praying blessings over those that are still dealing with the virus. I think most of our folks, uh, church family folks, have gotten over the virus, but still dealing with the cough, still dealing with some, some after, after effects of it. And uh, I don't know of anybody that's been tested positive in the last few days, and uh, certainly we're praying for uh, all of our church family for that, as well as other needs and situations, because the COVID has affected their jobs, it's affected lots of things, and uh, we're praying this morning, God, to bless and touch those situations, and to give us the blessing we need, and um, won't pray any specific needs or specific names this morning, we're just going to believe God to bless and touch our church family, our community, state, country, and so on. If you have a need, you can go to our CT Prays, which is P-R-A-Y-S, as in pray. Uh, prayer page and uh, share those needs over there. I will update that list later today and probably this evening uh, before we have our Sunday evening Bible study at 6 I will go on live to the CT prayer page and I will uh, we'll do a live prayer meeting. Uh, let's go ahead and just plan that for 545. I'll be live there. If you want to join me there I'd love to see you there and uh, be praying and like I said if you've got a prayer need go over there and if you're not a member of that page go over and and uh, request to join its closed group so that when we put na names and needs on there it's not broadcast over the whole internet it's just that group of people that are part of that group and part of our church group and uh, so it's a it's a very private thing so uh, we want you to want you to know that but uh, this morning let's pray and ask God to bless and touch us and be with us today father in the name of Jesus you know those that are in our church family that are dealing with the after effects of this virus father I know that there are those that are still living with cough I know of one that's still dealing with pneumonia in his body, Father, and I believe you to touch, bless, and heal. Father God, speak your blessing, Lord, over any that are still dealing with symptoms and signs and issues with this. Father, we speak blessings over those in the home with them that they would not get the virus. And Father God, we pray today for this church family. Lord, you know every need, body, mind, spirit, financially, and I believe you to work and, and move and minister, God, in each and every heart, each and every life, to bless us today and speak life, peace, and strength to our hearts and lives through your Holy Spirit, and through your glory. We honor you today, ask you to bless our community, our state, and our country. Father God, we pray, Lord, this virus will be gone in Jesus' name. We pray blessings over the leadership of our county, of our state, of our country, Lord, as they make decisions uh, concerning this virus and many other things that affect us all. And Father, we believe you today to give your blessing, your strength, and your power to your children and to let your Holy Spirit flow in us, through us, and for us. And God, to use us to bring glory and honor to your name in this world. And we give you the glory, the praise, and the victory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Let's, uh, let's spend a little more time in worship. And then we will get into our word this morning.
Today I want to begin to share with you on the true meaning of Christmas. This will be a three-part series that will end on the Sunday before Christmas. And I want to talk about three specific things over the course of the next three weeks. Today we're going to talk about peace. Next week we will talk about, uh, I believe it is, joy. And in the final week we'll talk about love. And, and all of those things, I want to, I want to kind of come from the, from the premise of thinking about this to understand that these are not products of this world. These are not things that you're going to find that occur naturally in this world. The true peace, the true joy, the true hope, the true love, the true all of these things that we can go to the, the fruit of the Spirit, obviously, because that's a supernatural thing, and deal with it even from that standpoint. And I'm sure that'll come up because, well, I'm speaking in generally those, those nine attributes of the Christian life come up in our hearts and, and out of things that I share with you on a regular basis, especially in light of anything you talk about with Jesus Christ. But... As we think about this today, and as we get into this, this line of thinking today, friends, I want you to think along the lines that this is not peace as the world understands peace. This will not be uh, hope or joy or love or anything like that as the world considers it, as the world thinks of it. And it's not, it, it's, it's not even, when we're talking about peace, remember, peace is not even necessarily an, an absence of conflict. This is the calm in the storm. This is the calm in the midst of the battle. This is what we have through, Je through Jesus Christ that we can't have any other way. And, and, it's, and, and, you know, and let's be honest, there are times in, in the way the world operates where there is no conflict, there is no trouble, there is no storm, if you will, but yet there's no peace because of the heart being bound up with all kinds of concerns and cares and troubles and issues and trials and all things that are going on. So, so think of it that way and think, that, think along the terms of we're talking about the source of this being one and only one place. Colossians chapter 3 is where we're going to begin. I'm going to read verse 2, but then we'll look back and we'll kind of, kind of get the context of the whole passage from 1 through verse number 7 as we, uh, as we enter into the word this morning. So let's begin right here with, with uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse number 2. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Father, in the name of Jesus, speak to me and through me this morning to bring a word that will touch every heart, every life, and every situation that will bring glory and honor to your name, will speak life, peace, and strength to those that hear this word and receive it today by your Holy Spirit and by your power. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. As we think about what this word means today, what the word peace means, when we think about peace, we are thinking about a word that speaks to the very essence of what we need as much as anything else in this world. Uh, the last couple of weeks we talked about peace, and we're talking about it in the context of the meaning of Christmas now, and when you think about peace, you're thinking about, uh, you're thinking about the, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter how difficult your situation may be, you still have the peace of mind. You still have a comfort, a strength. You have a, a knowledge of the love and the, the, the protection and the, the divine providence of God in your situation, whatever it may be. And that's a very vital, that's a very vital aspect of what we're talking about because that is the peace. That even though your storm may be raging, you are confident that God's love, grace, mercy, all those things are yours, and you are living in that and experiencing that every day of your life. So friends, we, we're, we're approaching this from the standpoint of the source of this is no other. And as, as our verse states, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. The earth does not provide, this world does not provide for us the things we need to have our peace, to have our, our, our just anything that we need that we carry through this world. This world offers us, uh, offers us wonderful things. There are beautiful things about this world. God has made us a wonderful world to live in. And you can go to a beach, you can go to the mountains, you can just sit and watch, you know, just watch a cornfield as the wind blows across it. Uh, well, right now it's just corn stalks, there's nothing there. But, but before they cut the corn, and the, or the, you know, the, 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 the beans or whatever else, even here in the rolling hills of northeast Kansas, when you look at that, you see the beauty, you see the splendor, you see there's, there's all the, the creatures and all those things. I love all those things, and I enjoy all those things. But when you, when you stop and you think about the, the context of what I just read to you here in Colossians chapter 1, I want to go ahead and look at the entire passage with you here. And uh, let's, let's begin in verse number 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, uh, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things earth. Our key verse today, as we, uh, as we go forward here, we've got to get that focus, that heart, that mind. He said, then he said, for you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. 
Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, uh, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked uh, when you lived in them. So uh, as, we, as we consider this today and we're thinking about what, what the Word has given us here, what the power of God supplies us in the, the forgiveness that we've enjoyed through Jesus Christ, and then we have, we have peace because peace is, is a powerful, powerful thing. And what we have in the advent of Jesus Christ, is, which is our focus now, of course, in the advent of Jesus, the birth of Jesus Christ into this world, born, born of the Virgin Mary and and lived his life, what we have there is the introduction to a peace like has never been known. Now, again, I, I can't help myself here. I have to do this. Uh, that when Jesus came and Jesus provides for us our salvation, the result of all of that comes again to the fruit of the Spirit and the fruitfulness in which Jesus talks about fruitfulness a lot um, in, uh, in his teaching and the things that he said while he was on this earth, not to mention what we have through Peter, and James, John, and Paul, and so on. Uh, that, that, the, that the disciples share with us through their epistles. But, but friends, I want you to think and realize today as we talk about peace and we talk about the peace of God uh, as we go back to Philippians uh, chapter 4 from last week, the peace of God that passes understanding. Friends, we have something here that is so precious and so wonderful. There's only one source for it, and that is Jesus Christ himself. When he came to be, to be a part of our lives, to came to be Emmanuel, God with us, when he did that, he brought with him the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control like the world had never known or experienced. Because you've gone from a, a system where you had, to, you had to sacrifice an animal, you had to, to go through a process, and all these things had to be done according to the law that God gave Moses, and Moses handed down, and the, ch- and the children of Israel lived according to a, a little bit, not really, not really much down through history, if we'll be honest about it. But they, they had this, and this is the way things were. But then Jesus comes, and everything changes. Jesus comes to be the Lamb of God slain for the sins of the world. Jesus came to be everything we need him to be. And in that is our salvation. In that is our life. In that is hope and peace and joy and strength and all these things that we have through Jesus Christ. There is no other way but by Jesus Christ to have life and have it abundant, to have the strength, to have the passion, the power, the victory that we need to overcome sin Self and Satan in this world, friends, because if we will stop and we will recognize the, the promise and the power that exists in our lives through this peace and through what Jesus Christ has done, it changes everything. It drastically changes the paradigm of the way this world operates because this world is a, is a dog-eat-dog world. This world is a self-first world. And what Jesus Christ brings us is, is to love, our, love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind, and love our neighbor as ourselves. Because in that love, everything is contained. Now, Christmas Sunday, the Sunday before Christmas, we're going to focus in on that love. We're going to talk about that in, in detail, which we talk about love a lot. I do. I talk about love a lot, and I know that. But, but I want you to understand that in that love, let's just take that word love, and I don't want to get ahead of myself here because I'm focused on peace and going to focus on peace this morning. But in that love is found everything else that God provides for us because it's the agape as we've talked about. And that agape is all-encompassing, doesn't, doesn't think of itself, only thinks of the object of its affection, the object of its love, the object of its desire, the object of the relationship that, that, that the agape brings and the agape embraces. And that, that relationship, that love, that peace, that victory, all of that, ladies and gentlemen, comes into, into being into process, into power, through the love of Jesus Christ. And, and his, his be, being Emmanuel, God with us, brings with it that love. And in the, um, under the umbrella of that love, we have the peace that we're going to talk about in detail for the next few minutes this morning. And this peace is, is powerful. And we're going to look at what, what the Lord spoke to, uh, spoke to and through um, Zechariah. Now, let's kind of go back into the story here. And look at the, 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 the whole story as, as told by Luke primarily. Luke gives us our best picture of it. I'm going to be in Luke chapter 1, starting verse 67, when I get to where I'm going to get to. But leading up to this, we find in the, in the Word that we have a man named Zechariah. It was his turn to go to, to offer prayers, to, offer, uh, to burn incense to God. And this was part of the Jewish, uh, the Jewish process and part of the Jewish system, the way they did things. And it was his turn. The lot fell to him. 
Now, he and his wife Elizabeth were up in years, and they were, they were, they were, they were to that place in life where they realized and recognized, you know what, this is, this is it. This is it's just going to be the two of us, and we're going to be what we are, and we're going to do what we do, and this, and this, is, this is life until, until God, uh, God carries us home. And he was faithful, and Elizabeth was faithful, and these were good, good solid, God-fearing, God-loving people, right? So Zechariah is burning incense to God, and he's, he's offering those prayers. And in the process of this, the angel of the Lord appears to him and tells him, that he's going to have a son. And, you know, he, he, like we see in other cases similar to this, we say, well, you know, we're old people. I'm paraphrasing that, of course. We're old people, and this, is, you know, we're past that time. And it's just not, this, isn't, this doesn't seem likely. But Zechariah, the angel said, because, you, because of this, you're going to not be able to speak as a sign until these things transpire and take place. So Zechariah comes out, and the people are like, well, he was in there a long time, and they're like, well, he can't speak, so something happened, something's going on. So there's already a buzz. There's already a buzz going on. What is this about? What does this mean? What did he have happen? He can't tell us. And so what are we going to do? So time goes by, and I'm, I'm, I'm skipping some stuff here, uh, some vital stuff, but I'm skipping some stuff here. And we get down to the point in Luke chapter 1, starting at verse number 67 here, just a moment, that Zechariah has been, and now is the father of John, John the Baptist, as we know him, as we know him, and John has been born and Zechariah has his has his speech back after he says his name is John writes it down he gets his power of speech back and now in verse number 67 the Bible tells us this now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied saying blessed is the Lord God of Israel for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David so we have that promise there that, that God promised to David. And he goes on and says, As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that he should be saved, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The earth, <clears throat> excuse me, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest for you shall go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge, to give knowledge to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercies of God with which the day spring from on high has visited us. Now here's where we get to the part I'm, I'm trying to get to now. To give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. So the child grew and became strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his manifestation to Israel. So we know that's John the Baptist. So now, now let's, let's kind of come back here a little bit. Some of the things that, that, that Zechariah says here under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Of course he begins in verse 68 with blessed is the Lord God of Israel. And we start with that because that is the beginning of all praise and glory and honor to God. And that's a, that's a vital thing. So he talks about David. He talks about the prophets and how they spoke and said that there will be a, there's going to be a Savior come. And he promised mercy to our fathers. And he, he set a covenant with Abraham. And, and what, did he, what does that covenant do? That covenant gives us uh, the deliverance from our enemies, that servants, service to God without fear, holiness and righteousness to live before him all the days of our life because we know that it's not within us to live holy and righteous lives without the help and the blessing of God. We have to have that. And he says, and I love verse 76, verse 76 through 79. This is, this is the context that I want to really get to anyway. And your, you, child, will be called the prophet of the highest. He's talking about his son, John. For you will go before to prepare uh, the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. He's, 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 that, he's that prophet that's going to prepare the way of the Lord. To give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercies of God with which the day spring from on high has visited, visited us. Verse 79, here's the key uh, that, that, we, that we're looking for here. That we are talking about to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death. Friends, when we look at what, what this says and the promise of God that we have here, that you have peace that comes through the promise of God. And that peace that we're talking about is that peace that passes understanding. We are talking about a relationship with God that, that is powerful, that is glorious, that is incredible. And that we have that peace. And that peace that, we, that we're talking about here has to do with the very presence of God being in our lives 
every day. That peace of God that passes understanding, that peace of God that we deal, that we look at and we experience by his glory, by his strength, by his power, by his own determination. God made the decision to involve himself in our lives and to give us opportunity to know him and have life and hope and peace in him. God has granted us that and that, that peace that 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 uh, that John, or excuse me, that that uh, I lost my train. I lost where I was. Or the peace that Zechariah. I got too many people going on here. The peace that that Zechariah prophesies here in in Luke chapter number one. That peace that he's talking about has everything to do with the peace of heart, the peace of mind that says that our sins are forgiven. Our life is brand new in Jesus Christ. Those mercies are new every morning and new every day, as the Word tells us, and that we have everything that we need in Jesus Christ to experience everything that God has for us every single day. It's a choice that we're going to make. It's a decision you'll make and I'll make each and every day of our lives to experience that fullness, to experience that life, to experience the, the promise of God. And he desires to do these things. He wants to do those things. And at the end of verse number, 70, it's not, at verse number 79, he said, to guide our feet into the way of peace. To guide our feet into the way of peace. That is physical, that is spiritual, that is emotional, that is every aspect of your life that, is, that, that, that carries you into the way of peace. And the way of peace is the way of God. The way of peace is relationship with God. The way of peace is not found anywhere else. Again, Jesus said, in this world you'll have trouble. We know that. We understand that. We get that. And we deal with that. We're dealing with it now. And several of you that are watching this with me this morning, you know full well what I'm talking about there because you've experienced this, let alone other things. You've experienced this virus firsthand in your own home, in your own body, and dealt with that. And, and thank God that, that for the most part we're getting, we're getting past it and we're getting beyond it and, uh, and, and getting, getting that, that dealt with and, and folks are getting well. But beyond that, we have incidents, we have accidents, we have trials and tribulations and family issues and all these things that, that just will, will rob us of our peace if we're not careful. But even in the midst of those things, even in the midst of those things, we have those experiences where the peace of God hits us and brings us a calm and a, and a, and a reason and a, just an ability to, to function. Because without it, folks, I don't know what we would do. Without it, I don't know how we would function. Without the peace of God, there, I, I don't think we could function in this world because there is so much against us in this world because this world hates Christianity. Uh, it's, it's, it's vehemently against us in every way that it possibly can be, and we don't experience it here in the, here in the United States at this point anything like they experience in other places around the world where they could be put in jail for their faith in Jesus Christ. They can be killed for their faith in Jesus Christ. They can be, you know, the, all kinds of just, I mean, be beaten up and left in the street for their faith in Jesus Christ. And we, we, don't, we, we don't face any of that. I don't expect anybody's going to beat me up because I love Jesus. And nobody's going nobody's to do anything against me. I mean, things happen. There are incidents. There's isolated situations. And we pray there's not ever another one like that uh, where somebody comes against a believer or goes into a church and does something awful. That's, that's, that's just terrible. But, but the peace of God that we have is the same peace of God that, that the Word of God gives us and tells us here that, is that this, is, this is to guide our feet in the way of peace. And the way of peace is the love, grace, mercy, and promise of Jesus Christ. There is nothing, there is nothing like it. There is nothing like it. Now, in chapter 2, in chapter number 2, as we continue on the story of the advent of Jesus Christ, as we think about the, the birth of Jesus, and we think about what Jesus Christ brought to this world, Neighbor, we've got a promise here. We've got a victory here. And whenever Jesus is introduced to the world, in effect, by the angels in Luke chapter number 2, what we see here again, there's the word peace is going to show up. You'll see it. And you, you know the story. And, and uh, you know it just as well as I do, more than likely as we think about it here this morning. But here's what, here's what Luke records in Luke chapter 2. And we'll start in verse number 8. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch of their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. 
So in the, the announcement, I'm going to leave that on screen just for a second as I talk to you. In the announcement that you have of the, 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 the birth of Jesus Christ, and he goes to the shepherds and tells them, hey, the, 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 the Savior's been born, you'll find him wrapped in swaddling clothes, this is what you're looking for, this is what you'll see. And they get down to the end, and the whole host of angels and this whole sky filled up with the glory and the presence of these angels and the glory of God that shone through them. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Can you imagine what that was like? I've done a, a uh, over the years, I've done a, a couple of, of uh, illustrated sermons where I dressed up as a shepherd, and I talked about that night. We did one last year that Matt and, and Brother Jim Foster helped me with. It's really, it's fun to do, and, and uh, it's, it's just kind of neat to think about it maybe in a little bit different way. But man, I'm telling you, if you'll just stop and think about what these guys experienced, can you imagine being a young person? And there you were experiencing that, and the, the, the glory of God shines all around you, and those angels, and the, the, the wonder and the splendor of all of that. Those angels show up, and what happens? What's the first thing out of the angel's mouth? Do not be afraid. Because I can tell you, just it, I, I've not experienced it yet, and I do want to experience it. I want to see an angel. I just do. Uh, maybe I'm the only one. I doubt it. I, I, I want to see one. But the first thing out of their mouth is, do not be afraid. We see that thread that runs throughout most of Scripture. Whenever there's an angel present, do not be afraid. It must be a, an amazing, incredible, and even a fearful sight. But when you recognize and realize what they've come to do, they come to tell them that there is a Savior born in the city of David who is Christ the Lord, the Chosen One, the Messiah that you've been waiting for for generations has come, and He's been born. And He is born, and He's wrapped in swaddling clothes. He's lying there in a manger, and they get through, and here's, here's how, here, here's how they, they, they leave them with this. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And that peace, again, is not the absence of conflict because you can look back down through history and you can see that there have only been a few hundred years of actual peace without war in this earth's history as we know it. That's incredible to me. And there's fights going on all over the planet still yet today. And there will be all the way until probably the Great White Throne Judgment, if you want to get down to it. There's always something going on, always a fuss, always a fight, always some kind of controversy. Some kind of issue. Somebody trying to get over on somebody. That's, that's the way of this world. That's the way this world functions. But for the child of God, that peace that passes understanding, that peace that's granted only through God, that peace that the source is God himself, and through his love, through his mercy and grace and all those things, that is what, that's the peace that we're talking about today. And that peace, that peace is powerful. That peace takes the heart of the child of God who may be going through the deepest, darkest valley you've ever been through. The child of God that is going through the difficulties and the, the situations and circumstances that we often face. The child of God it looks at the situation and says, it's going to be all right. God is with me. He's going to bless me through this. And I don't have to fear. I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to be, I don't have to be beside myself. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind, the Word tells us. And friends, today, because we have that peace, we have that peace that the only and true source of, of real peace is, is from God. We have that. And when Jesus Christ came to this world to be born of Mary, he brought with him everything that the child of God needs to live in this, this old hard, miserable, tough world we live in. Oh, praise God. Neighbor, we have, we have a promise here. We have a victory here through Jesus Christ that is, that is available in no other way. Listen, there's religions all over the place. There's all kinds of religions of all kinds of things. There's even splinters of stuff that's come off of the, off of the name of Jesus Christ. And they're, they're false and they're cults and they're a mess. But where Jesus Christ is, where his spirit is alive, where he is working and moving, where people allow him to be their Lord and Savior and him alone and be their Lord and their Savior, and bridge the gap for the relationship with the Father under the leading and the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit, all of that brings us to a place where there is genuine peace, there is genuine hope, there is genuine joy, there is genuine love, there is genuine everything that a child of God needs to go from where we are to where he is eventually when this life is over, whether it's through death or whether it's through the rapture. doesn't matter because we have a peace that says one day because my name is written down in heaven, I will be right there. One day. I will, have that, I will have that complete and total experience. My faith will end in sight. This life will cease as I know it, but it will go on forever in a way that I've never known and I've never experienced. Because I can take you back through, my, through all of the memories that I have of my life. I can go back all the way, through, through all the way back to my youngest memory. My mother was sick my entire life. She passed away when I was 21 years old. 
and she was, I never knew my mom to be healthy. I never, I never, she never had, she never had very many healthy days in my lifetime. She was a diabetic, she had heart, she had heart disease, she had uh, blood pressure issues, all kinds of things that went against her. I never knew her to be healthy and well. But in January of 1992, because she knew Jesus, she went into a place where she'll never again be sick, never again have an issue, never again feel bad for any, about anything, for anything, in the presence of Jesus. And seven months the day after that, I truly give my heart and life to God after dealing with a time of grief and misery and a whole bunch of junk. And through those seven months, I, I, peace was not a part of my life. There was, there was nothing about my life that was peaceful or very, very little good that happened over that time that had to do with me. I was a miserable person. I was a drunk. There's lots of things that, had, that, that I had going on. But by the grace of God, neighbor, by the grace of God, he loved me. He spoke to my heart. My wife practically made me go to church on, on August 23rd, 1992, and the rest, as they say, is history. That day, God got a hold of my heart and my life and changed me forever and brought me to, to a real and a wonderful and a, and a powerful relationship with him that I've not gotten over yet. He called me to preach, and here I stand today with the joy and the privilege of being the pastor of Calvary Temple here in Hiawatha, Kansas. And I know, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, that my peace is in him, my hope is in him, my joy is only from him. The love that I experienced in my life and the love that I have to give in my life, the true source is him. And that is the premise from where we take the true meaning of Christmas. As we think about the true meaning of Christmas and what it all boils down to and what it all really comes to is the very idea and the very fact that Jesus Christ is the source in his birth, life, death, resurrection ascension back to the father and the, and the sending of the holy spirit to us that everything that we need in this life is ours everything we need in this life we have through him so the true meaning of christmas the true meaning of christmas is that jesus christ came into this world to be emmanuel god with us and he brought peace he brought joy he brought hope he brought love and we're going to talk about those things over the next couple of weeks and of course we'll come back and talk about peace a little bit more as we as we get get uh, get closer to the conclusion but but friend i want you to think about it with me this morning i want you to understand something today there is a power in this because the power in this is that in spite of everything going on around us in spite of everything that's happening in this world we have peace with god we have an experience with him and i'm going to show you that in romans chapter number five let's look together at romans chapter number five and verses 1 through, uh, 1 through 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with our God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me just stay right there for a second. I'll leave that on the screen for you. Therefore, having been justified by faith, so we put our faith in Jesus Christ to, to, to believe that he is the Lord and Savior of this world, that he is Messiah, if you will. And then, then because of that, he says, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let me hold on here. Let me come back here. Let, let's, 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 let's think about this and talk for just a second. So, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. What happened to the peace with God? Where did, where did we have trouble that we don't have peace with God prior to Jesus Christ? We have that trouble because there's sin. Sin brings division between us and God. There is a, a gulf that, that's there, a, a gap, if you will. And because of Jesus Christ and because of putting faith in Jesus Christ, that is bridged. And that bridge is, becomes, becomes our, our, our access to God. That was broken by sin. So therefore. He says therefore. Having been justified by faith. We have our peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through whom also we have access by faith. Into this grace which we stand. And rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that. Well this get, gets good now. Not only that. Exactly what I'm talking about right here. The troubles and trials and issues we go through in this world. Not only that. But we also glory in tribulations. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. In perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So that's our springboard into next week where we talk about hope. But, but before we do that, I have a couple things I want to share with you before we finish up today. He said that hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. What I just read in that one verse, in verse number five, was a, was a, a complete and total Reader's Digest condensed version of what I'm sharing with you right here. It's because we have hope, because we have love, because we have 
uh, joy and peace, all those things are wrapped up in Jesus Christ. And there is no other way. There is no other way to experience the real, genuine hope, joy, peace, patience. All those things do not exist outside of a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit. It, do, it doesn't exist. It can't. Because it's not available any other way. It doesn't exist any other way. He is love. But beyond that, He is our peace. He is our joy. He is our strength. He is our life. He's the author of it all. And when I enter into a relationship with Him, through the shed blood and the salvation experience available only through Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit, that brings me to a place where peace should be the norm rather than the exception. Where hope should be the way I function in my life every single day. Where joy is who I am and what I am, whatever I'm going through. Where all of those aspects of the fruit of the Spirit and the, 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 the grace of God are revealed in my life and in my experience day in and day out. Every day of my life. Praise God. And I close back in Colossians. Chapter 1, 19 and 20. And here's what Paul wrote to this church. He said, For it pleased the Father that in him the fullness should dwell. The fullness should dwell. And by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth, things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of the cross. Do you today know this peace that I'm sharing with you today? Do you know what it means to have the love of God in your heart and life? If you're with us today, maybe you're watching this, you're watching this from anywhere. I saw a couple of people from that looked like they were from somewhere else in the world a while ago that said so and so was watching. Regardless of where you are and who you are, this may be a divine moment here that God has set up with you to let this word be shared with your heart from Hiawatha, Kansas. And I'm going to tell you what that word is. That word is that God loves you. God loves you so much that he sent Jesus Christ to be Emmanuel, God with us. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, loves you so much that he came and he gave his life on Calvary's cross for you and for me to have a relationship with us, to have life in us and to experience life with us. The Holy Spirit leads us, draws us, helps us to know Jesus and then helps us to live for Jesus. So this is, I mean, this is, this is beautiful. It's incredible. It's amazing what God has done for us. So today, what do we, how do we deal with this? What, we, what do we do with this? We do this. We A, accept that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. We, we B, believe in Jesus Christ as our own personal Lord and Savior. And C, we confess with the mouth that He is Lord. According to the Word of God, if you will confess with your mouth, from your heart, that Jesus Christ is Lord, that you will be saved. And have a relationship with God. And this peace that I talked about this morning. And the love and the hope and the joy. All of this is yours. Through Jesus. And through faith in him. I just read it a while, while ago in Romans chapter 5. Having been justified by faith. That faith that we put in Jesus Christ. That he was born of a virgin. Lived a sinless life. Died on Calvary's cross. Rose again. Ascended back to the Father. And sent the Holy Spirit to help us know him. And live for him. Once we do. So can I ask you today friend. Do you know him? If you are with me today and you say, no, I don't, but I want to. I want to lead you in a prayer today to ask Jesus Christ into your heart and in your life to be your Lord and be your Savior. And as we do this this morning, this is your opportunity to know genuine, real life in Christ. To know what it means to be saved and to be a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? Would you pray this prayer with me this morning? if you're ready to ask Jesus into your heart and into your life today. Dear Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. You came to give me life. You came to give me love, hope, peace, and joy, and everything that comes with you in a relationship that you have just for me. Forgive me of my sin. Be the Lord of my life. And help me to live each and every day for you through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Friend, if you ask Jesus into your heart today, I'd like to ask you to do something for me. Would you contact me? Would you let me know? Would you let me know that you did that, that you, that you prayed this prayer? 
The email address is there on the screen, ctagpastor at gmail.com. You can go to www.ctaghiawatha.com and find information there, find information about our church, where we are, uh, get, get in touch with us, see there's a link to older messages that we've posted on YouTube, that kind of thing there for you. And I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to know. And if you don't live in this area, we'll help you plug in, find a church where you are. And if you live in this area, we certainly will look forward to seeing you. And again, hopefully we'll be back to meeting in person uh, as early as this Wednesday night. And uh, by next Sunday, hopefully we'll be back in person services uh, for our Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night at this point. So believe in God for that. And I hope and I, I rejoice with you today. If you ask Jesus into your heart and life, I'm excited for you. And I want to know that. I want to hear from you. Please contact me. Please do so with that email address on the screen. Or go to that web page and there's a place there you can click on that will take you and get, let you send, you send me a message uh, through that and contact me that way. But uh, I am so proud and so excited. And as we go on to think about, again today, the true meaning of Christmas and we think about what this means for us in our life and our hope and the peace and the strength we have in Jesus Christ, friends, it is, it is about us. It's about you and it's about me. And it's about having life and having abundance and having, having a, a true real relationship with God that impacts every other relationship in our lives as well. As we conclude our time together today, I'll leave you with our, our passage that is, uh, has become the, the, the standard for our, our dismissal and our time that we, that we finish together, whether we're in person or not. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. What a timely, timely way to end, a timely way to think today about who he is and what he's done for us and the life we have in him. God bless you. Hope to see you back tonight at 6 o'clock. I'll be right here live on this Facebook page tonight at 6. And uh, hope to see you here. Hope you'll be with me tonight and enjoy some more time together in worship and in the word as we uh, continue on our study of the book of Acts and uh, begin to look at how the Gentiles were reached, which is good news for us because, well, most of us are those Gentiles that have been reached uh, since Acts chapter 9. So, Love you, praying for you. Let me know what I can do for you. Please contact me if you need anything at all. And uh, we'll look forward to being together again tonight at 6.